Hello. About four weeks ago in my vlog, Olive Tree Care, you saw me repot my four standard olive trees. So this vlog is an update to that one, and it's also a compilation of my top 10 tips for caring for olive trees. So let's have a look at how they've got on since they were repotted. Well, I'm delighted to report that they are doing incredibly well. Most, if not all, of the yellowy leaves that had started to appear have dropped off and they've been replaced by lovely, healthy olive green leaves at the tips. And look at this. The whole bush, and indeed all four of them, are now covered in lovely new flower buds. The olive bushes are clearly enjoying life since they were repotted. So let's now review what happened and put together a list of 10 top tips. Firstly, we noticed that the roots had reached the limits of the pots that they were in and they needed more room to grow. So lesson number one, if you're keeping olive trees in pots, they will need repotting every couple of years or so. Because don't forget, a pot is a limited resource. And eventually, all the compost in that pot will become spent. So they need repotting for vigour. The second thing that we noticed when we took these olives out of their original pots was that the roots were damp, almost soggy. And if you think about the native climate of olives, which is dry, arid, well-drained earth, that was obviously something which was making them unhappy. They did not have enough drainage. So tip number two is add extra drainage. Put crocs at the bottom of the pot. I added gravel as well at the bottom of the pot to help the excess water get away from the roots when it's had a good soaking. And if you like, add some grit to the compost to help with the extra drainage. Because whilst these trees do not want to dry out completely, they do need good drainage. Tip number three, they are in pots. That is a limited resource. They need feeding. So feed your olive trees at least once a fortnight. Think about the energy and the food they're going to need to turn all these olive flowers into olives. And I use a basic tomato food because when I look at the ingredients on plant foods, they're all pretty much the same ingredients, just in different proportions. And I find tomato food works fine with olives. So that's tip number three, feed them regularly, especially when they're in pots. Tip number four, whilst they do not want to have soggy feet, they do need plenty of water, especially when they are producing fruit because they will need water to help those fruits to swell into olives. So make sure they are well watered, but don't water them daily. Give them a good drench, either once a week or once a fortnight, and then let them almost dry out between watering. Now I deliberately leave a two inch gap at the top of all my pots so that I can flood the water on top and see it drain through. That way, I know they've had a good soak. If you fill your pots to the top, the water might just run off, particularly if you put a dome shape on your compost. So leave a good gap at the top of the surface. Point number five regarding pruning and fruiting. What you need to be aware of is that it only produces flowers and therefore fruit on one year old growth and it never produces flowers in the same place twice. These flowers are on growth from last year which I did not prune and it won't flower next year in the same place. So if you want fruit this has implications for your pruning regime. You need to prune in such a way 
that allows for one year old growth to remain on the tree. And as I will point out later, that one year old growth has to go through a winter and be exposed to low temperatures for two months. What I'm going to do as an experiment with two of mine, as I've got four, is I'm going to leave two as a kind of a control to see what would happen if I did nothing. But for the other two, alternate ones, I'm going to go in with my secateurs and remove half of these flower buds. The theory is that that will, number one, let light in to the remaining flower buds, allow more space in the bush for the olives to swell, and reduce the demand on the plant. But by leaving two and pruning two, I'll be able to compare the results in terms of yield. Another effect of doing that, hopefully, will be to bring the growth back towards the centre of the bush, which will help it stay slightly more compact and promote new growth for next year's flowers. And I will share the results of that experiment in a future vlog, so if you want to know how it turns out, please subscribe now. So in summary for point number five, if you want fruit, you need flowers, and it will flower on one-year-old growth, so you need to prune it to allow for some one-year-old growth to remain next year. Tip number six is the olive will only produce new growth and new flower buds where there is light. And that's why many people prune them into a sort of vase shape where they have branches coming out at the outside and the light can get in at the top. And that's evidenced here because if you look inside the bushes, there's hardly any new growth at all. It's all on the periphery because the periphery is where the light is. And you know, it takes around five years for an olive tree to produce fruit. And that leads me to tip number seven. If you do want fruit from your olive trees, it needs a couple of cold months in the off season, in the winter time. Two months where the temperature drops below 10 degrees. And that will stimulate it into producing flower buds, which will become the fruit. So let them go cold for a bit in the winter. And even in the UK, these are quite hardy plants. I leave mine outside all year round. And I do get temperatures down to around minus eight or minus nine, even against this brick wall. They need a couple of cold months in the winter time to produce fruit. In terms of pollination, tip number eight, most olives, including these, are self-fertile, which means that the pollen from its own flowers fertilizes its own fruit. And it does that in the wind or the breeze so that when all these flower buds turn into flowers and produce pollen and the breeze catches the bush, the pollen will permeate around and each of these buds will be pollinated. So put them somewhere where there will be a little bit of a cross breeze and that will help them to pollinate. Tip number nine. Now I know that I mentioned earlier that you should feed them regularly, particularly in the early season and throughout the fruiting season in summer. But stop feeding them towards the end of the year in late summer, because that will encourage the new growth to harden off and it will discourage the plant from producing new growth at the end of the season. And my tip number 10 is top dress or mulch. And you can watch my vlog on how to mulch and the benefits of mulching, but essentially the benefits of mulching are threefold. Number one, it helps to retain moisture in the soil, which preserves water, saves time watering, and reduces the risk of the plant drying out. Number two, it suppresses the weed because you're covering the surface of the soil and that prevents some of the weed seeds getting light. And that reduces competition for the main plant. And number three, it feeds the soil because as your mulch 
starts to decompose and break down, it leaches nutrients down into the soil in the pot. So tip number 10, apply a top dressing or a mulch to all of your pots. So there we have it, an update on the olive trees which I repotted a month ago, they're doing incredibly well. And 10 top tips for caring for olives. I hope you liked it. If you did, please do like, share, subscribe and hit the notifications bell. And do comment below because I love to hear from you. And I'll see you soon.